Good morning, everyone. How are you guys today? Oh, that's my puppy. Hey, Minnie. Um, so you see I have a little, oh, hello, Minnie. I have a little bit of a different setup today. I'm sitting on the couch because I injured my back this weekend, so I don't want to get too excited as we're telling the story and be jumping around. But my puppy right here is super excited that I'm sitting on the couch. So if none of you guys have met her, this is my little dog, Minnie. She is very playful and she wants to play right now, so you might see her bounce around this video. So go ahead, uh, as we're getting started, I'm going to say hi. I guess I'm saying hi for Minnie and I because she's joining me today. So let me go ahead and comment for you guys. Hi, everyone. Okay, I'm typing it right now. Sorry, I was concentrating. Hi, too. Okay, I said hi for Minnie and I. You guys go ahead and say hi in the comments. Good morning, Kaylee. How are you today? I'm going to keep my phone going. I'm going to keep my phone over here because, like I said, I just kind of hurt my back a little bit. So we're going to be sitting down today to tell the story. Um, Minnie's going to help us out. And I have a really cool craft for you guys today, too. Good morning, Miss Wendy. So... I want you guys, remember at the end of our lesson last week, we started talking about things that we know are there, but we can't necessarily see them. So I had thought about a few things more. I didn't know if you guys thought about some things too. Good morning, Miss Linda. So some of the things that I thought about was air freshener. I bet some of your parents have air freshener around the house. And um, good morning, Colton. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Ariella. So I bet you guys have some air pressure around your house, and when you spray it, I mean, you can see it a little bit there, but you can't, I can feel it falling on me. I can feel the um, cold. I can smell it, but I can't see it, can I? Can you guys see it? No, we can't. And that's one of those things, too, that we know is there. We know you guys saw me spray the air freshener. You know it's there, but we can't really see it. That's like love, too. How many of you guys know love? Like you might give someone a hug. Maybe yesterday you shared some love with your mom or your grandma or an aunt or a special woman in your life. The, how We can't really see love. It's not something that's like in the air. But we know that it's there. And that's a lot about what we were talking about. Remember that thing we talked about last time? The wind. Remember we can feel the wind in our hair. We can see the leaves blowing. But we can't really see the wind. Like, think about being hot or cold. You can't see those either, but you can feel them. So, that's a big part of our story today. We're continuing our story from last week. Remember who we were talking about last week? Do you guys remember what his name was? It started with a T. Thomas. That's right. We had talked about Jesus and the story with Thomas. Now, Jesus had appeared to his disciples, and Thomas didn't believe, or appeared to the disciples, all of them except Thomas. Remember, there was no Thomas. But this week, he's going to appear to Thomas. So let's back up our story a little bit. We're going to hop in. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to need you guys to do some motions with me, but I'm also going to need you guys to say some important lines because there's some important things that the people say in this story. So I'm going to need your help to say those. Do you guys think you can help me? Okay, great. So um, the first part of the story is, remember, Jesus had appeared to the disciples, but Thomas was not there. When the disciples finally met up with Thomas, they said, and this is where I need help, they said, we have seen the Lord. Okay, I need you guys to say that. Ready? Say, we have seen the Lord. Good job. One more time. We have seen the Lord. Oh, you guys are awesome disciples. Yes, they had told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. Now, what did Thomas do? Did Thomas believe? No, he didn't. Thomas said, unless I see the marks on his hands and the mark on his side, I do not believe. So say that with me as Thomas. We're going to be Thomas now. Say, I do not believe. Oh, that was really good. Let's do that one again. Okay, say it again. Say, I do not believe. Good job, guys. So after Thomas told the disciples he didn't believe, it was eight days later let me see your number eight lift up your fingers let me see eight fingers eight days later and jesus appeared to thomas and you know what jesus said Do you remember what he said in our last story when he appeared to the disciples 
That's right. He said, peace be with you. So say that with me. Peace be with you. Oh, you guys are doing great with these lines. Let's say it one more time, okay? Peace be with you. Good job, guys. And so Jesus said that to Thomas and all the disciples. He said, peace be with you. And then he showed Thomas and the marks on his hands. Remember those marks we talked about? You could touch your hands in the middle like the marks. And the mark on his side, you go ahead and touch your side. And Thomas believed. Okay, we need to be Thomas again. This time you're going to say, I do believe. Shake your head and say, I do believe. And he called Jesus my Lord. So say, my Lord. Good job. One more time. My Lord. Oh, you guys are awesome. And Jesus told Thomas there, he's like, have, or have, excuse me, do you believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who believe but haven't seen. Hmm. That's a lot like those things we were talking about. We all believe in love, right? But we don't necessarily see it. Y'all believe me. I'm blowing, I can tell you, I blew the air freshener out, but you can't see the smell in the room. You guys all believe there's hot and cold, but we can't see it. Blessed are those who believe in Jesus, even though we can't necessarily see him. And that's all of you. You guys are all blessed because you believe in Jesus. Even though we can't, like, see him standing right in front of us, we know he's there with us. We believe and we know that he's surrounding us. You guys did so good. That's so awesome that you're those blessed people. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tell the story again. So we're going to start back from the beginning. Do you guys remember those lines you were saying? Okay, if you need some help, remember, we're going to go over them one more time. The, the disciples said, we have seen the Lord. Good job. Thomas says, I do not believe. Way to go. Jesus says, peace be with you. And then Thomas says, I do believe. So, you guys ready? I'm going to need your help with those lines this time. Okay, so... Jesus had appeared to the disciples, all of them except Thomas. When the disciples finally met up with Thomas, they told him, what did those disciples say again? Oh, that's right. We have seen the Lord. Good job, guys. But Thomas said, unless I can touch the marks on his hands, touch your hands, and the mark on his side, here's your line. What did Thomas say? That's right. He said, I do not believe. And so Thomas didn't believe, and it took eight days. Let me see your eight fingers. Eight days later, and Jesus appeared to Thomas, and he said, what did Jesus say again? You're right. He said, peace be with you. Good job, guys. You're doing great. And he showed Thomas and let Thomas touch the marks on his hands and the mark on his side. And when Thomas did this, what did Thomas do? What did he say? That's right, he believed. He said, I do believe. And he called Jesus, what was that he called him again? My Lord. Say that with me, my Lord. Good job, guys. And then remember, Jesus told Thomas, you have believed because you have seen. Blessed are those who have not seen but believe. And that's all of us. So you guys did so awesome with those lines. We're going to tell it one more time, okay? Can we be really loud with our lines this time? I like being loud, so I bet you guys like being loud too. So you think we can say our lines really loud? I think you guys can. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. So, Jesus had appeared to all the disciples, but not Thomas. When the disciples finally met up with Thomas, they said, what did they say? That's right. We have seen the Lord. Oh, you guys were so loud. Great job. But Thomas said, Unless I touch the marks on his hands and the mark on his side, I do not believe. Say that again. We're trying to say really loud. I do not believe. Good job. How many days later was it? Eight days later. Eight days later, Jesus appeared to the disciples again. And this time Thomas was, was with them. And what did Jesus say to the disciples? That's right. He said, peace be with you. Say it again really loud. Peace be with you. Great job. And when he, after he said this, he had to let Thomas and see the marks and touch the marks on his hand and his side. And Thomas said, what 
what Thomas say again, really loud? I do believe my Lord. Say it again, really loud. You guys are doing great. I do believe my Lord. Awesome. And Jesus told Thomas, you believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who believe and have not seen. And remember that. Great job, guys. Give yourselves a round of applause. You all did so great. And we are blessed. Even though we can't always see Jesus around us, we can feel him around us. And we know that we are surrounded by his love and his, uh, and his helpiness. So he might not be standing right next to you, but he is always with you. He's always in your heart and he's always guiding you. And you can always pray and talk to him and just know that he's there with you. And we're blessed in that way. And then we're always blessed in other ways, too. Like we have great teachers and moms and dads and aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas and friends and all kinds of people that God blesses us with that help us, too, that provide us with that comfort and love. So know that because we believe, even though we can't see Jesus, like, standing right here, we're blessed with so many things as those believers and believing in him. So I brought something along with me today. I want to make sure. Hi, Miss Kathy. Hey, Colton. So I brought something along with me today. I don't know if you guys have ever seen one of these before. This is called a kaleidoscope. Okay, this one I made at home, so we're going to get to make one of these today too. But what you do, you see these little beads at the end? Now, if you're looking on the outside, you can't really see those beads. The whole point of a kaleidoscope is you get to look through this little hole on the other side. And when you hold it up to the light and you look through it, the beads will reflect pretty colors inside. And this is a lot like us, too. Sometimes we're just kind of looking at the outside. We're missing the big picture. We're not seeing everything. We can't see that it's all there, right? But look at what's here. There's this little mark. Remember how Jesus had the marks on his hands? We have this little hole on the back of our kaleidoscope. And with that little hole, we can see all the beauty and all the awesomeness of these beads. And just like that little mark that Jesus had on his hands, it was an amazing thing that allows us to be blessed and us to see the beautiful things of life and the beautiful things that Jesus can do. So this kaleidoscope is going to remind us of the marks on Jesus's hand and how through those we are blessed and we are so grateful for that with him. So I'm going to show you guys how to make this. You'll get to what you'll do when you're, once you make it is you're going to look through this little hole and look at the light and it's going to turn. I can't really show you through the, you might be able to see, you can kind of see some of the colors in there. It's kind of hard, but on your own, you'll be able to see it. So Let's go ahead and pray real quick, and then I'm going to show you how to make this kaleidoscope. So, let's go ahead and put our hand, prayer hands up. We're going to go slow today. I know we haven't gone slow. This is kind of crazy. We're switching it up a whole lot. But we're going to go slow today. So, everybody put your hands up, and we're going to go very slow. You guys ready? Why well, I start close? Sorry. Start close. Here we go. Open and close them. Open and close them. Give a little clap. Open and close them. Open and close them. Fold them in your lap. Oh, you guys are really good at doing that slow. Okay, go ahead and pray with me. Repeat after me, guys. Dear God, thank you for your son, Jesus, who we may not always see, but we know is always there. Thank you for our blessings and for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great job, guys. Okay, so to show you how to make this kaleidoscope, it's pretty easy. Um, what you're going to do is... Good morning, Hunter. How are you? So what you're going to do is you're going to need quite a few supplies for this, but once you get started, it actually is pretty easy to assemble. And once again, it's all supplies you find around the house. You don't really have to buy anything. It's anything that you might have um, lying around. So... You'll need a toilet paper roll. You all have some of these. Um, some tin foil. This is to go inside. It kind of makes the triangle inside to help reflect like the mirror. So you'll need some tin foil. You'll need um, 
Plastic, a plastic bag is what I used to put my beads over the bottom because I felt it was easier to put the beads in. So a plastic bag, two, um, two hair ties or rubber bands. I have hair ties, so that's what I'm using. Um, you'll need a piece of paper to cover the other end where our hole is. Some beads. I'm just using the beads out of the house. And then of course you'll need a scissor. A sharp pin or something to poke the hole. I like this pin because it's really sharp. It helps me to poke the hole really easily on my one side. And some stickers or markers or crayons to decorate. I'm using stickers because I'm just kind of feeling those right now. So, <clears throat> what you're going to do first. I like what we're going to start with is we're going to fold the inside piece for our, um, for our kaleidoscope. It's a little, it makes a triangle inside, but it's what reflects all the beads. So, um, I'm going to take just a piece of tin foil. You don't really need a super big piece. I'm going to take something about this size. A um, little bit of a rectangle. And yes, it is bigger than my um, uh, toilet paper roll, but that's because I want I'll cut it down at the end. And you can also use a paper towel roll if that's what you have. I just have a toilet paper roll already. So what you do first is you fold it in half with the shiny side out. So if you look at the tin foil, this side's super shiny. This side's not as shiny. We're going to fold it with a super shiny side out. So you're going to go ahead and fold this super shiny side out in half. So we fold it in half long ways. Now we're going to fold it in half the opposite way. So now we have this. This is going to be, and once you do that, it folds down to about the right size, as you can see. It's, now what you're going to do, so after you have your perfect little, or your little rectangle like this, you're going to fold two of the sides down about an inch together on the same way. So that I fold that one down. This one's going to come up about an inch. Okay, there we go. And this is stabilizing our um, triangle. Now you're going to flip it over, and now we're going to fold on this side. So we're going to fold this into thirds. So we're just going to kind of fold it about a third. See, I fold it about a third of the way down. There you go. Made a little bend in it, and then this one goes about a, goes the other third up. So I just kind of flatten out my edges so I get a nice triangle. So then you open them up. So after it's all folded, I kind of fold my sides, and then you open it back up, and you're able to put these two pieces together, and it's a triangle. And the extra stuff on the side just kind of gives it stability, and now it fits. It'll fit inside here. And so I kind of fit mine in and measure it. And as you can see, I need to cut a little bit off, but there's my triangle inside of my toilet paper roll. Okay. So I'm going to cut a little bit off because I can see mine's a little bit long. That's why you need scissors to cut some of these if they're a little long. So let me cut this down some. Okay. So now that you've made your little triangle, we're going to put, I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to put this off the side because we don't really need this yet. We're going to do our beads at our end first. So. Now, remember on this side, we had all of our beads. So all I did for this is you're going to take a plastic bag for our next step. I like plastic bags easier. You can use saran wrap, um, but you need to have a flat surface. The plastic bag, I can just pour the beads in. And any kind of beads that you have, I have some letter beads and some clear beads. So I'm going to use the clear beads so that way the, um, the light will shine through. Good morning, Miss Patsy. How are you? So I'm going to pour all the, I'm going to pour like a, you don't need a boatload of beads. I'm just taking like a pinch from every color. It just kind of reflects this. Oop, I just threw some beads on the couch. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to add a few more than that. I'm going to put these little ones. beads to about fill the bottom of your bag. You don't need a whole lot, just a, just a couple. Okay. And then make sure to seal your bag. So close it up and seal it, get all the air out of it and seal it. Okay. So then what I did is you got to put it around the bottom of this. So I kind of put all the beads in the corner. Put my thing over top of it and then just kind of move the plastic around so that way they're all centered. There you go. So 
So see how I put my beads all inside there? I'm just kind of moving them a little bit more in the middle. Actually, we're going to go to a different one. So pour your beads to the middle. See how I kind of made them all right there in the middle? Hey, Minnie. Hey, babe. Minnie's come back to help us. And you're going to put that all, it's going to go all, you want all those beads to fit in the circle of your, there we go, in the circle of your toilet paper hole. So you're going to get all the beads moved to the center so you have extra plastic all around the sides. And you're going to put all of your beads right in the middle of that toilet paper roll. The more beads, the more colors you get. So you kind of want to make sure it fills the toilet paper roll, but it doesn't have to completely fill it. Then you're going to take one of those hair ties that you have. And you're going to wrap it around the top of the toilet paper roll to keep the plastic in place. Kind of, or a rubber band, if you have a rubber band, or you can tie it with a string, anything that works. So once that's in place, I cut off this extra because I don't want the zipper part of the bag here. I made sure it's pulled nice and tight. And then we're going to cut off the extra part. So we're going to cut off the Ziploc ooh, bag part. Just cut around it. There we go. Cool. So, now I have some, and you can use that part to decorate. If you want to cut yours closer, you can. I just kind of leave my, I like the little plastic on it. But now you can see that I have the colors there, and my beads, as you look on this side, you can see them all through. So that's the base of our kaleidoscope. Then you're gonna put, remember that triangle tinfoil piece we made? Now that's going inside here, because that's ready. I did cut some off before, we're going to have to cut a little bit more off because there's a lot of my beads in there, but as you can see, you can start to see the beginning of my kaleidoscope and the beads inside. But I'm going to cut a little bit more of my triangle first, so I'm going to just cut a little bit more off of this. That looks about right. Okay. So now, you have your triangle that you're going to drop inside of Make sure it's open so you can see all the sides. You're going to put it inside of your kaleidoscope. There we go. Okay, so now you can see I got my triangle in there. You can kind of see that the beads are starting to reflect on the metal in there. And we got the front part. So now we're going to add the back part and get our hole in there too. So what you're going to need for that part is that piece of paper that we had in the beginning. And once again, I just folded this one twice to get it down to a smaller size. So I folded it in half and then I folded it in half again. So I just have a little rectangle, and I cut this part, I cut this, I mean one, I only need one of these, so I'm cutting it down. So you only need, you actually even need less than that, so you take one of these quarters and you fold it in half again, and you cut it. And it tends to, a little bit, it tends to work a little bit better, it's less bulky. So we fold it in half and we cut it again. So now we have a piece of paper this size. It's about an eighth of a sheet. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take that and you're going to wrap it like we did the plastic around the top, the other side of your toilet paper roll. So you see it's all covered. And then use the other uh, rubber band or hair tie and attach it to the top. Move mine up some. Make sure that you get all the corners of the paper. I didn't get all the corners, so I'm like moving mine up so it does, so it stays in place. Okay. So once you have that up there, the last step that you, or the, se the second to last, of course, before decorating, can't forget decorating, is you're going to take that pen or pencil or whatever, oh, you can use scissors. I like, like I said, I like this pen because it's a really like, sharp end, so it's easy to put the hole. And you put the whole dead center of your kaleidoscope. There you go. Poke it in there. I go gently because I don't want to tear the paper. So you kind of go make this hole a little bit bigger so you guys can see better in there. Okay. So then you have your hole. And if you look in your kaleidoscope, you can see the beads back there. Let's see if I move my hand a little bit better. You can see, oh, there they are. You see the beads back there and they'll reflect. But if you hold them up to like a light, like a window, You'll be able to see all the pretty colors and beads and shapes. Just looking through that little hole, looking through and remembering Jesus, we can see all the blessings and the beauty that he has for each of us. 
You guys did an awesome job. Um, I miss seeing all of you, and I'm looking forward to when we can meet together again. Until then, we'll be here every Monday at 9.15 doing chapel time. I hope you guys have a great week. Blessings!